fictional characters aren't the only ones that are liable to experience dramatic, life-altering change on a film set. While not necessarily frequent, Hollywood movie productions have a dodgy, long-standing history of tragedy, with more deaths than any movie producer or director would probably care to admit. Shocking real deaths while filming a movie. Brandon Lee 20 years after the untimely 1973 death of his father, iconic kung fu action hero Bruce Lee, 28-year-old actor Brandon Lee's life came to an end amidst shocking and tragic circumstances. The younger Lee was on set filming the dark revenge thriller The Crow. According to the script, he and his girlfriend were to be shot dead by a group of thugs, only for Lee's character to return for revenge in the form of the titular Crow. Unfortunately, the dummy gun that was supposedly loaded with blanks had an actual bullet lodged in the chamber. An actor playing one of the thugs, unaware of the bullet, fatally shot Lee while the cameras were rolling. Vic Morrow It's oddly and eerily appropriate that one of the most horrific on-set tragedies of all time occurred during the filming of The Twilight Zone, the movie. Risk-taking director John Landis was using a low-flying helicopter in one scene when its tail rotor was severed by a pyrotechnics blast causing the chopper to go haywire. In the ensuing chaos, the helicopter blades decapitated veteran actor Vic Morrow and seven-year-old child actor Micah Dine Lee. When the vehicle finally crash-landed, it crushed to death another child actor, six-year-old Renee Shin Yi Chen. The accident led to legal action against the filmmakers, which lasted over a decade. Martha Mansfield it can be reasonably assumed that freak accidents have a higher rate of occurrence on film sets owing to the presence of heavy machinery and, well, stuff that can kill you. But no one could have anticipated the freak accident that claimed the life of silent film era Hollywood starlet Martha Mansfield. Mansfield was sitting in a car while in costume, taking a break from filming The Warrens of Virginia, when a passerby mindlessly flicked a lit cigarette that happened to land inside the car. The cigarette landed on a highly flammable costume, sending the car up in flames and leading to her death from severe burns the next day. Roy Kinnear the role of D'Artagnan's servant is hardly a large one in Three Musketeers lore, but Roy Kinnear's portrayal of the hired helper was deemed sufficiently well done to include him in The Return of the Musketeers, the follow-up to the 1974 original. While on location in Madrid, Spain, Kinnear fell from a horse he was riding, suffering a broken pelvis. One day later, he suffered a fatal heart attack due to complications from the pelvis injury. Richard Lester, the film's director, was apparently so deeply affected by Kinnear's death that he quit the film industry soon after. Art Scholl. In order to give Top Gun a realistic, high-energy feel, producers hired famous ace aerobatic pilot Art Scholl to do in-flight camera work for the film. He was attempting a flat spin as per direction of the script when he entered it but was unable to recover and bring the plane out of the spin. Scholl crashed the Pitts S2 he was flying into the Pacific Ocean off the Southern California coast, dying from the crash. No cause was ever officially determined for the accident, but the Tom Cruise film was ultimately dedicated to Scholl's memory. John Jordan Trouble seemed to have no problems finding director John Jordan on movie sets. As part of the crew of the James Bond film You Only Live Twice, Jordan lost his leg when a rotor blade from a helicopter sliced it off. Three years later, as the second unit director on Catch-22, he neglected to wear a harness while flying in a plane during production. Jordan was soon sucked out of an open door of the plane, which dropped him 2,000 feet to his death into the Gulf of Mexico. He had been known to wear harnesses on other film shoots, prompting some wonder as to whether he may have had a death wish. John Eric Hexham John Eric Hexham was an up-and-coming star in the early 80s when he got bored one day on the set of Cover Up. Delays in production were leaving him frustrated, inspiring him to pass the time by jokingly playing a game of Russian roulette with a nearby 44 Magnum loaded with blanks. However, the impact from the blast and the gun's proximity to Hexham's head fractured his skull and sent a bone fragment flying into his brain, resulting in massive hemorrhaging. He was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Paul Mance even by aviation standards, Paul Mance was something of a daredevil. In fact, it was his decision to fly dangerously low above a train that happened to be filled with high-ranking officers that got him booted from the U.S. Army Flight School. But it was only after plying his high-risk craft in a number of films that he encountered his fateful production after coming out of retirement. His film set return came on 1965's The Flight of the Phoenix, where he was flying over a desert in Arizona and crashed into a hill. The plane broke into pieces, and Mance was killed instantly. Tyrone Power 
Everything about Tyrone Power screamed Hollywood, from his name, to his movie star good looks, to his manly action hero presence. Power was known to play swashbucklers on screen, so he was no stranger to dueling scenes. It was, however, during his filming of a duel with friend and co-star George Sanders in the epic Solomon and Sheba that he succumbed to a heart attack. He died en route to the hospital at age 44 and was feted with a military funeral in honor of his service. Power is now entombed at the famous Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Eric Fleming The hard luck life of Rawhide star Eric Fleming is the stuff of legend. Born to an abusive father, he left home at eight after a failed attempt to shoot him. From there, he got shot while doing odd jobs for gangsters to make money. His untimely end came at the age of 41 on the set of MGM adventure film High Jungle, when he drowned after his canoe tipped over during a scene shot on the Hualaga River. He was engaged to Lynn Garber and reportedly days away from his wedding at the time of his death. Although his will stipulated that his body be donated to medical science, it is suspected to have been devoured by piranhas. Thank you for watching. Here are some other videos that we feel you might enjoy, and don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks.